Okay, so um, today you guys got your exercise 212 handout, and at some point today I want your printout of your table and chair. Uh, you just have to pick one of the images. If you want to give me more, that's fine. Um, just so that I have a paper, I always like to have paper records just in case. Um, so n it won't mark things late if you don't give it to me yet, but I'd like at some point today, so after I'm done talking, doing lecture, print it and give it to me then. Okay, so we're going to work um, on the files that you need for assignment 202. Um, I've found that it's better to just like go ahead and work on your actual assignment than to try to have you do it and then do it for homework. So it, there's enough problems and whatever, for, we're just going to work on the actual assignment for a while. Apparently, uh, all of your computers were fixed so that we can actually open SketchUp and get the terrain from SketchUp. So we're going to go back a little bit and grab a fresh piece of terrain from SketchUp, and I'll walk you through the same stuff that we did last class. The assumption is that that will start to go a lot faster, and you'll spend more time with the parts that we're working on today. Uh, but I will start all the way back at the very beginning and, and go through, and I'll probably do the whole thing one more time on Wednesday, just so you see the whole process. Um, this is it's kind of interesting because I, I just, for whatever reason, I've found that this is a really, really valuable skill for you to have, and I want to beat it into you if I can help it. So um, bear with me in, in, re, in the repetition, but at the same time, I think it'll be, it'll be valuable to, to go through it yet again. So uh, assuming that SketchUp works, I'm actually going to go ahead and open up SketchUp to start um, so that we can go find a, uh, a piece of terrain to, to bring in. And so I'll go ahead and open SketchUp 2016. We'll go ahead and start using SketchUp. Um, it should, by default, be in feet and inches. So I'm just double checking that under template, which it is. And this then will go ahead and open up SketchUp. How do you do? If you if you can't find SketchUp, it's no, underneath all it. programs. Okay. Ah, uh, that's okay. You don't need any of that anyway. We're going to go to File, Geolocation, Add Location. And it looks like it's working for most people. So that's a good sign. <laughs> they were fixed. Uh, OK, and then under your location here, we're going to choose um, some place that looks interesting. So now here's the deal with the, with the terrain. It needs to be relatively hilly terrain, because it wouldn't make sense to do a model of something that was flat that defeats the purpose. If it's too much of a cliff, you're going to pull your hair out trying to do it, and the pieces will be too small. So we want something hilly, but not like half dome. OK, so somewhere in the middle. Um, so it's up to you if you have something that's particularly of interest to you or some place that you go and you'd like to do that. By all means, pick something that's interesting. Uh, I've had good luck in Hawaii. Um, some, some of those terrains are kind of nice. Uh, you guys obviously had the SketchUp file that I, that I pulled from Hawaii. Um, Yosemite is decent, but you can get into trouble because it can be too steep. Um, so you can get, you know, if you get too close to Half Dome, it goes vertical and that defeats the purpose. Um, you know, up in Tahoe, there's plenty of plenty of space up in Tahoe. I'll start with Tahoe, but if you want to do a coast, that's fine. Um, zoom out. Okay, so here's Lake Tahoe, for example, uh, and you know, essentially, I could pick, um, you know, anywhere. I don't know. For the fun of it, let's do let's do something with a lake in it. <laughs> Why not, right? Uh, okay, so I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And when when I'm looking in SketchUp here, if I'm looking down um, and I see this square, that's the largest piece of terrain that SketchUp will let me grab. If I zoom in further, this the square goes away, and I'll be able to grab everything that I see on my screen. Um, so when you get to kind of the square, that's, that's kind of the limit of things. So I'm going to go ahead and pick by s clicking on this select region. And again, I'm going to do the square so it's the largest size that I can get. And you see that I get these little, little pinpoints that I can drag. I can make them up to the size of my window if I wanted to. And once I have it, I'll click on grab. And we'll give it a little bit of time to, to go grab the, the terrain. It will, here I am trying to right click to orbit. There. It will give us an image that we can look on, but it will also give us the terrain. If I go to File, Geolocation, Show Terrain, we'll get 
the piece of terrain with whatever the hillside and, and whatever would be. Okay? So in this particular example, yeah, that's kind of reasonable as terrain. Not, not the most exciting, but not the wor least exciting. If I was unhappy with it, I could go to File New and I could open up a brand new one uh, and pick a different piece of terrain. I'm going to pick a new one that's a little bit steeper just so that it's a little more dramatic for you guys. Uh, no, I don't want to save changes. Let's do that one more time. Geolocation, add location. And pick something over here a little bit more. That should be a little bit better here. And I'll go to geo. Okay, whoops. Sorry, my bad. Grab. And let me go to geolocation, show terrain. There we go. A little, little bit more fun. And so it's brought in this piece of terrain, and now I can start to work with that particular piece of terrain. So in order to bring it into Rhino, I need to save it as a SketchUp. I know it works with SketchUp 7, um, but I keep meaning to try it with a different version. So I'll go up to File, Save As. And here, under Save As Type, we can go back in time to SketchUp version 7. And I know that works, so I just go ahead and do it. It won't change anything. And I'm going to save it on my flash drive into today's folder. This is 212. And we'll call this Tahoe. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. That's all I have to do with from within SketchUp. So I don't really need to, to manipulate anything. I don't need to work with anything. I just need the, the very basics of this. Sorry, I've got yeah. some keys. Is anybody? No. no. <laughs> all right. Thanks. OK, so I've gone ahead and I've saved that Tahoe SketchUp file. Uh, and this is what I'm then going to bring into Rhino. It's essentially the exact same thing that I gave you last class with uh, the Hawaii terrain. This is just something that I picked. Okay, so when you're when you're doing your your particular model, sometimes it's fun if you pick the location. You might be a little bit more interested in it. Um, if you really want to just use the Hawaii one, that's okay too. It's entirely up to you. So I've gone ahead and I've saved that. Now we can close SketchUp, hopefully for the last time, and then we'll open up Rhino. <laughs> And I'm going to do a new large object inches, just like I normally do. All right, so now I have my Rhino file open. I'm going to confirm down here at the bottom, yes, I am, in fact, working in inches. So that's good. One of the things to be very careful of when you're bringing in terrain from SketchUp is that your units have to match. So if you, if you chose feet and inches in SketchUp, you have to make sure in Rhino that your units are in inches. Um, and so we have to just make sure that those correspond. Otherwise, your, your, your terrain will get way out of, uh, out of scale. So once I'm in Rhino, I'm going to do the same thing I did last class. I'll go to File, Import. And I'm going to bring in that Tahoe SketchUp file. So we'll go ahead and say open. We're going to bring it in as a mesh. All the default options are just fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. And it will come in. Now, I definitely don't need the little person. Um, so I'll go ahead and delete her before I get too far. And there, if I were to view this as a shaded model, I'd have my little piece of terrain. And I'd also have this uh, plane that represents um, the, the flat piece in, in SketchUp. I'm going to go ahead and organize my layers a little bit so that I have a layer called SketchUp and a sublayer that we'll call SK Terrain and maybe a, another sublayer called SK Flat. It's really, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any difference what you name them. I just like to have them organized. Um, and so I'll right click and say Change Object Layer. And then I can turn that one off. And then this one, I'll change to be on the SketchUp Terrain layer. 
and that then gives me the ability to just turn off all the SketchUp. SketchUp comes in with these other layers, the Google Earth Terrain, the Layer Zero, and the SketchUp Earth Snapshot or whatever. They've never really worked for me, so I tend to, to do it um, in, a, in a brand new set of layers. And of course, they, they came in with uh, the little person, so it's not letting me delete Layer Zero, but that's fine for now. So now that I have my piece of terrain, I want to go through the exact same process to convert this. Remember last time we talked a lot about the fact that it was a triangulated mesh with these weird kinds of little valleys and stuff. I want to smooth that out just like I did last time. So I'm going to do the exact same thing that I did before. I'm going to make sure that my vertex is checked so that I can snap to the corner. And then I'll use the contour command. So I'm going to make a layer called contour x, x, and another layer called contour y. And I'm going through this a little bit faster, because if I went through it the same speed, we'd be at 40 minutes, and I wouldn't have told you anything new. So the, the assumption is that I have to go a little bit faster in order for me to actually show you something. Uh, so I have contour x, and I have contour y. Let's make contour x active here. And I'm going to go ahead and contour this surface. So I'll go up to my curve, curve from objects, contour, select the object. There's my object. I'll hit Enter. Contour base point. I'll pick this corner here. And remember, I want to go off in the x direction so that I'm not snapped to anything. It has to be just a perfectly horizontal line. We'll go off in that direction. Distance between contours, I'm going to do 100 feet. And there you go. I contour. Now, remember, if I go right back and contour, I would be contouring the lines, and I get all the little points. And some of you last class ended up with all those points, and we had to get rid of them. So before I repeat the contour, I'm going to change my layer to contour Y, and then select the surface, not the lines. And then we'll go in the opposite direction. So once again, curve, curve from objects, contour, or I could type contour. We'll go from the same corner, only this time we'll go off in this direction. And I'll hit Enter. And we get that section of lines. So at this point, I'm done with the SketchUp file altogether. So I can go ahead and just turn that off. And I get my nice grid that represents my surface. So let me go ahead and switch into the top view. And this is a perfect flat grid, exactly as it should be. And now I need to trim off the excess. So I'll use this and this, that. And that, oops, that as my trims, as, excuse me, as my cutting objects. And then I'll go ahead and get rid of all of those lines, all of those lines, all of those lines, and all of those lines. So because I'm going to do the curve network out of this, I have to make sure that there's no little ragged edges and then it's nice and clean on all the corners. Okay? Now that it is, I can come back, and I can select my objects, and I can go to Surface Curve Network. Await. Oh, it's complicated. That's the reminder right there to save your work before you do this. So let me go to File Save. And I'll click Save. And then let me go to Surface, Curve Network. And I get my points, so all is good. And we'll go ahead and say OK. Now, I should have changed my layer first. Um, let me change this layer. Uh, we'll call this Surface, for lack of a better name. And then I'll do the Curve Network. So it's automatically going to be on that layer. So let me go to Surface, Curve Network, yes, OK. And then we have to let it do its thing for a little bit. Contour X and then Contour Y. And then trim. 
so that it's even, and then curve network to create the surface. Okay, so it went ahead and did it. Now remember, when I do this, everything becomes very, very slow because I have way too dense of a surface. So I need to do that rebuild. So I'm going to click off so nothing's selected. And I'll zoom in a little bit, I hope. Actually, it might even be easier to right click and say select objects because they're just on that one layer. Sometimes that's easier. It'll, it'll be this big yellow block until I type rebuild or go to edit rebuild. And again, patience is a good thing here. And I want to change the U and the V to at least 100 by 100. And so I'll start at 100 by 100. And I'll say OK. And that then makes it a much easier to work with, which is, which is a good start. Let me go ahead and turn off the X and the Y contours. I have just the surface left. And I'm going to look at that little pinch point and decide whether that's enough smoothing or whether I want to do a little bit more. I think I'd like to go a little bit more. So I'll rebuild. And maybe I'll go 75 by 75. And then we'll have a look and see. Yeah, that's OK. I'm, I'm OK with that for right now. It can be a little bit jagged. So that's, again, that's a personal preference as to how smooth you want it uh, to look. OK, so we now basically caught up with everything that I did um, last class, um, though we did a little bit more with it. and We projected some lines and whatever. But this is as far as we needed to go. And so that wasn't too bad. That took me, what, 17 minutes instead of 38 minutes. So we saved a little bit of time today. So now we move into what we're going to try to cover today, which is kind of the next phase of making this, the files that you need to make this model. Okay, so a couple things that are important to note before we get too invested in this, um, in, the, in the digital files, when we're making the, the physical model, the actual model size is going to be 11 inches by 17 inches, which is big enough to be able to cut easily on the laser cutter but it's not so big that we have to piece it together or whatever. So the 11 by 17 is a, is a nice size. So that's the ultimate size that we're going to pick. If you make it out of cardboard, which is what I would recommend doing because it's a relatively inexpensive thing to, to do, we need to know before we even move forward what the thickness of the cardboard is that you're intending to make the model out of. Okay. So if you decide to go to the bookstore here and you buy the cardboard that they have, it is this cardboard, and it's 5 30 seconds of an inch thick. So we, we care about precision here. right? If we, if we measured it, kind of ballparked it at an eighth, which is what I would have assumed when I was an undergrad, oh, it's just an eighth of an inch, it won't quite turn out right. It's a little bit more than an eighth of an inch. So we're going to go with 5 30 seconds for this particular cardboard. If you want to make your model out of some other material, all you have to know is the thickness of the material. Okay, I'm going to assume for, this, for the sake of what, what we're building that you're going to use this cardboard and it's 5 30 seconds of an inch. Okay? But like I said, if you want to change the material and you want to build it out of something else, occasionally I have people that want to try it out of a different material, that's fine. You just need to know what the thickness of that material is. Okay? So we're going to assume it, that it's 5 30 seconds um, for the moment. So the next thing, by the way, all of this is written out. If you go to Physical Modeling 6.1, it'll walk through everything that I'm talking about. So you can go back and, and reference that later on. But for right now, um, I'm actually going to go through it. So uh, first thing that I need to determine is I need to determine the scale at which I'm going to build my model. And so if we were, say, in 220, and you had to build a site model of your site, 
chances are whoever was was um, you know running the class would say I want a a model at you know a sixteenth inch equals a foot or I want a model that's at one to two hundred or some some scale and so what I did is I translated numbers for you based on a particular scale. Now, for the, for the scope of this class, we're going to do whatever fits nicely on our site. So it's kind, of, it's, it's kind of easy. You can pick whatever scale you want. There's a chart that's, that's at the bottom of the handout that you got for today. Um, and uh, yeah, or at least hopefully it's at the bottom of the handout that you got for today. Because this is critical for how you, how you go about modeling this. It's kind of a cheat sheet. It's actually it's printed out in the book, too, so that if you lose this piece of paper down the road, if you open up the book, it's in there uh, so that you can go back and do it. This is engineering scale, right? Some of it's in engineering. Some of it's in architectural scale. I have them both on this little, this little sheet. For whatever reason, this is probably not showing points. You contour, if, you're, if you're getting points, you contoured the lines instead of the surface. If you contour lines, you get points. If you contour surface, you get lines. Anyway, SELPT will get rid of all the points. OK, so um, let me go ahead and pull this up, up this little cheat sheet so that you guys can see it uh, a little bit larger here. OK, so we've got some information here. So under select scale, drawing inches and actual feet, these are the scales that you could pick. So if you wanted, say, quarter inch equals a foot, right? we go quarter inch equals a foot. At that scale, anything in that column would be what we were what we were trying to, to do. Okay, um, my guess is that that's not going to fit. So I'm going to go up here in the engineering scales at like one to five hundred or one to two hundred, something like that in scale. Uh, but again, I put all of these in so that you could actually determine what the size would be. Okay, so then we come over here and I give you information about the laser bed size, twelve by twenty four. But what we really care about is the paper size or the, the, the model size, which is 11 by 17, okay, which is these next two columns. So at 1 to 200, for example, 11 by 17 is 2,200 feet by 3,400 feet. Okay, so these units are in feet, 2,200 by 3,400. So all I did was I did the multiplication for you. You could figure this out. Okay? But instead of you having to figure it out, uh, it was nice, gave you the multiplication. So all we have to do is look at the 2200 by 3400. So if I come back into Rhino and I draw in the top view a rectangle that is at 3400 feet, comma, 2200 feet, enter, that then is the size of 11 by 17 for my particular model. And I can then move it over someplace on the terrain, and then we're going to cut it out. Okay? Now, I might be able to fit a little bit larger piece. So let me look at the next scale up, and let's see if I can fit that. If I went to 1 to 500, I'd be at 5,500 by 8,500 feet. So let me, let me come back here. And I'll draw a rectangle at 8,500 feet, 5,500 feet. All right, so in that case, this is too big. I don't have enough. So I'm not going to be able to do that one. I could probably do the 1 to 250 if I want. It's a less common engineering scale. It's more of a hybrid of an architect scale and an engineering scale. So I'm going to stick with the 1 to 200 for right now. Now, when I place this over the top of my terrain, it would be nice if I paid a little bit of attention to what the terrain looked like and where this little piece was going to go. So I'm going to do kind of a combination of the top view and kind of the side view so that I can see you know, what, am I, what am I cutting out. So in this particular case, right, I kind of have a nice hillside there. That looks like it could be a reasonable, reasonable placement for it. Uh, maybe, maybe I'd want to be a little bit further over so I'd have a little bit more of the flat. I can move it over. I can kind of look and see, OK, I have a, kind of a nice hill along this side but I have some flats in here, yeah, that could be a good placement for it. Once I have the placement of my 11 by 17 sheet at the correct scale, I'm going to come in here into the top view, and I'm going to project this rectangle right there onto the surface. So I'll go up to uh, curve, curve from objects, project, or type project. 
And it's going to say select curves to project. There's my curve. Select surface. There's my surface. And I'll hit Enter. And now, if I look at it, what was the flat surface is now a very nice, flexible set of lines that represent my border. Make sense so far? Okay. Again, all stuff that we've already talked about in class. So that looks reasonable. I'm, I'm pretty happy with where, what piece of terrain I took as part of making this model. This seems reasonable. I'm happy. Okay. So now that I have the correct size established, I'm going to go ahead and use this curve, right, if I can select it, that curve right there, as a trim, so I'll, uh, as a cutting object. So I'll type trim, and I'll get rid of all the excess of the surface. So I'm now down to just the surface, and I can actually get rid of that line too. I'm now down to just this piece of surface, and that piece of surface is essentially the surface that I'm trying to model in 11 by 17 form. So does that chain of logic work for you? You follow how I got to this piece? OK, so now we have to start making this as if I were going to, um, to cut this out in three dimensions. So on this model, right, we know that the thickness of a contour is 5 30 seconds of an inch. So if I go back to that sheet, that I pulled up, the cheat sheet. And I was at 1 to 200 scale. If I come across here and I look for my material thickness, there it is, at 5 30 seconds of an inch, and I match up my scale, my contour interval is 31.250 feet. So I need to have a line every 31.250 feet to represent every step based on this material. So that's going to be a Z contour. Okay. So again, it's tied to the thickness of the material. If I had a material that was a sixteenth of an inch thick, it would be a contour every 12.5 feet. So it's going to vary based on the thickness of the material because we want the surface that we're modeling to be accurate. If we picked a different thickness, then our material or our contours would be too tall for the actual size. So the important number for me here is 31.250. And so I'll come back to my site here, and I'm going to do a new contour. And I'm going to do this on a new layer. And we're going to call this like cardboard contours or something like that. So I'll make sure that that's active. And we're going to go up to my curve, curve from objects, contour. Select objects. There's my surface. Enter. I'll pick this corner right there, but I need to go up in the Z direction. So we'll switch into one of the side views to make sure that I can go straight up in the Z direction right there. And now I type in 31.250 feet and I'll hit enter. And it will then slice up my model based on that desired interval of the cardboard that I'm going to make. So if I turn off the surface, and we look at this, I can now see a rather nice set of steps that's going to represent this little piece of terrain that I would end up making. Okay, So we're going to take this one step further today, and that is that we're going to start to make the sides. We won't be able to finish because you won't get there. I've done this long enough to I know about where you can get in a, in a day. So if you look at this model and you see the side, see how the side piece has little steps in it? Those steps correspond to the steps that are in the topography. Right? There's a little bit of trip finesse in, in how they come together, but it'll make more sense as you start to make it. So if we look at this side, there's the perfect set of steps. So I want to recreate the curve that represents all of those steps. And there's two different ways of doing it. Um, and for whatever reason, one of the ways, the way I would actually do it if I were doing it, ends up being confusing for some people. And so I've, I've kind of, I'll show both ways, and you can think about which way works for you. Uh, and I'll explain both in a little bit um, more detail. So the first method, I'll do this for the back side because it's less points. <laughs> it's not how I would do it. And that is that I'm going to come up here and click on the single point tool. Or actually, I could click on the multiple points because I'm going to create multiple points. It's going to say location of point object. And I'm just going to pick points at each 
end of the line. So let me turn off vertex and not basically everything except for end here. And I'm going to put a point on every end of these little lines. There. That one is on the corner. Did I miss one? Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, we'll go back and place one more point. There we go. OK, so I've placed a point on each of these. And what I'll do now is I'll select those points. So that they're selected. I don't want to select any of the curves. And I'll start with the lowest point here. And I'm going to do a rotate 3D, and I'm going to fold these points flat. Because drawing in the three dimensions is a little bit harder. And I'm going to show you how I would do it in the three dimensions, so you don't have to do this. But for some people, this makes more sense. So I'm going to do rotate 3D. My rotation axis is going to be right here along the axis of my side. And we'll start going vertical, and I'll fold those flat, something like that. And so if we look at this, we can see that now those are flat in the x and the y plane. And I could go ahead and in, a, in another layer here, let me call this sides. Or si I could do side one. It depends on how you want to do it. And then I can come into my polyline tool. And I'm actually going to start right there. Let me turn on my point snap. And I'll work using my smart tracking to create Come on. Each of my steps as I go up the side. And I should probably turn on um, perpendicular too. If it's hard for you to see this in three dimensions like that, you could you could actually do this in the top view. There are there are my lines, and I could do the the, the, the steps. Now, these need to be at right angles to each other. So switching into the top view, I can clearly see that all of my steps were at right angles. If you end up with steps that aren't at 90 degrees, then something's off. Okay? So you notice that I did this all the way along, right? but I didn't really do the first ones, and I didn't really do the last one here. And that's because this represents a hill that goes back down. And so in this context, um, and we'll talk through what these mean. If you get a little lost when you're doing this, don't, don't worry. We'll, we'll cover this more next class. But this actually goes back down that direction as it finishes. And this one is going to go there. Then it's going to go down one interval, 31.250 feet in that direction. We'll come across. And then it'll go back up. It's hard, it's hard to see this until you get used to seeing it. But it's essentially what's happening when you get to the peak and what's happening when you get to the valley. So you have to go straight across and then continue back up in your steps. If, if that part gets a little confusing today, don't stress out about it. We'll correct it. We'll deal with the corners and any of those valleys and hills uh, next class. So now that I've done those steps, I'll select the steps and the points. Hopefully. Remember, I don't want that line. All right? And we'll do the rotate 3D back. So rotate 3D. Start of rotation axis would be there, off into space. And then we'll fold that back up along the edge. So I end up creating the side that is all of those little steps. Okay. So for me personally, that's way too many steps to deal with. And the rotations and whatever. Um, so I'm going to use something that's called a C-plane. And what a C-plane is, is essentially the drawing plane. So right now, by default, when we're drawing in the perspective view or in the top view, we're always drawing in the top C-plane, the world top C-plane. So everything starts at 0, 0, and that's my x, y coordinate. That's where I draw. So if I was off here in space somewhere and I just started drawing, right, and I drew, that would end up being in the xy plane, whatever that is. Okay, So that's the normal standard world top C plane. It's kind of like the UCS in AutoCAD, if you're familiar with that. 
So I'm going to switch my C plane to be along the side of my model. And so to better illustrate this, I'm actually going to make my grid bigger. And it's not something that you have to do, but it'll help you kind of see what's happening. So I'm going to go up into my tools, options, and I'm going to go to grid. And instead of having a, a grid of 2,000 or 200, we'll do maybe like 2,000. 20,000, whatever. OK, so there's my 20,000 grid. And we can see there's my x and y. And there's my, there's my grid. It's actually the grid points are so dense, it just shows up as a plane. But that's fine. So instead of having it in the world top, I'm going to establish it so that it's going vertically along this side. So I'm going to come over here to this little triangle. And I'm going to go to set C plane three points. And when I set C plane three points, you see how I get that axis, the x and the y axis? I can specify where that starts. So I'm going to start it right here at that point. My first x direction is going to go off in, 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 the, in the same x direction. But my y, instead of going off in the y, I want it to go straight up in the z. So I'll change views to the front view and make sure that that's going straight up. Now, as soon as I click, what used to be my drawing plane that was horizontal is now a drawing plane that's vertical. So this is essentially like looking straight down in the old way. Only now I'm, I'm in 3D and I'm, I can draw on one side. So instead of having to do those points and the rotate 3D and all the rest of it, I can essentially work my way right up the side and draw the steps because I'm in plane with all of these points. So I'm just hovering until I set my smart point for my smart tracking. And then I'm continuing my way up the side here. Like so. So in my world, this is a lot easier and a lot faster to do that one step, change the C plane, and then draw the, the set of curves. When I'm done with this set, going up this side, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me do all the little points. When I'm done with this side, the easiest way to change the C plane at this point is to go back to world top. So I'll go back to set C plane. And one of the defaults right here is world top. So if you ever get lost or you get hung up or whatever, pick the one of these that matches whatever view you're in. So if we're in the top view or the perspective view, we go back to world top. If you're in the front view, you go to world front. If you're in the right view, you go to world right. So I'm going to go back to world top. And it resets it all the way back to where I was. And then I could do it, say, for this front. So let me go to right here. We'll go to set C plane, three points. We'll start right here. This time, we're going to go off in this direction first. And then we'll go straight up once more there. Now that's switched into this view. And I can start drawing, say, right here. And I can work my way up this side as well. So here's another one of those points. I just go straight across, but then I'm going to go back down the uh, whatever it is, uh, 31.250 feet. Obviously, you'll want to, that was inches, not 31.250 feet. There we go. And then I'll continue off. Now, when you get to these end curves, sometimes the easiest thing is to just leave them long and kind of hanging out there in space. That's fine. If not, just stop at the point before, and we'll deal with what happens at the corners next class, right? Because it's too much for you to try to visualize and handle today. So what we're looking at is we want these contours, and we want all four of the sides to have steps on them. That's the goal for today. OK? I know it's a lot to take in, but it's a combination of what we did last class and then the, the stuff that we added today. So if, if in lecture time I spent 17 minutes, we're up at 40 minutes. So it's really you know, another 23 minutes of what's new today. It's not that bad, right? OK, so go ahead and start on this. I imagine you'll need little bits of help along the way. That's the, that's the nature of today, I, I know, OK?